Welcome to the Family Life Blended Podcast. I'm Ron Deal. We help blended families and those who love them pursue the relationships that matter most. And one of the reasons we do that is because we want home to be a safe place for children. Today, we're talking to kids about their home and about their life in a blender. It's all from their perspective. Stay with me for that. Next month, January 6th, 2025, Nan and I are releasing our first book together. The title is The Mindful Marriage. This is my first book designed for all married couples, not just those in blended families. And I got to tell you, it's based on the work of my friend and counselor and mentor, Dr. Terry Hargrave and his wife, Sharon. They are the real geniuses behind this material. We just teamed up with them to share what it is and to make it available to you. We want to share with you what it's done for us personally in the process. You see, throughout the book, Nan and I are the number one example of transformation that can happen in a life and in a marriage when you apply the principles. We're going to share those principles with you, tell our story, and our hope is that it's a blessing for your life. Now, Let me just warn you, if you don't want to grow up as a disciple of Jesus or mature as a husband or a wife, then don't bother reading the book. But if you do, I think this material is going to help. It really cuts through all the fluff. It gets to the heart of what makes relationships work. We really are excited about this book release. It's been five years in the making. And believe it or not, you can actually pre-order your copy on Amazon right now. Or you can go on the Family Life store right now. Check the show notes for a link. The book will be out in a month. Well, I know you've already started thinking about gifts for your family, Christmas and all, you know. But let me ask you to consider making a year-end financial gift to Family Life. Why would you want to do that? Well, because your money doubles when you give before December 31st. A tax-deductible donation to you will be matched by other donors to the ministry, and that helps us to continue to reach around the world. Every gift gets doubled, so please pray about what the Lord would have you to do to support our work. Again, check the show notes for a donation link. We appreciate that very much. Okay, I'm really excited about our guest today. You know that in this podcast, we spend a lot of time talking about kids, about parenting kids, about what their world is like and their experience. And we even have a little series called Growing Up Blended, where we talk to adults who are reflecting back on their childhood. So we do that to get some perspective of what it's like to be a kid. But on this episode of Family Life Blended, we're actually talking to kids (laughs) about what life is like for them right now, today. Davis Faulkner is 18. He's from Atlanta, Georgia. He's a freshman at Auburn. He's passionate about music, motion graphics, and animation. Campbell is his sister. She's 16. She's a junior in high school. She's passionate about cooking, wellness, and riding horses. Campbell, I love riding horses. I think that's pretty cool. I want to hear some stories here in a minute. Uh, Davis and Campbell's blended family includes their mother and their stepfather. I actually interviewed Rachel and Rod for episode 133. It was called Remarrying After Loss. Davis and Campbell's father was an Air Force pilot, and he was killed tragically in a plane crash. That's what gave birth to their blended family story. Davis and Campbell, thanks for being with me today. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's really nice for you to be here. I can tell you some stories about your mom and your dad, but I I won't go there yet. Uh, We'll just hold on to those. And uh, we'll maybe hold those over their heads just a little bit. <laughs> and one of these days we'll be able to, to jump into that. Davis, what are you studying in college? What are you interested in? Um, my current major is graphic design. And uh, I do motion graphics and animation. Um, kind of did that like my whole life and just kind of yeah. wanted to grow it. And I'll probably end up doing business or something just to help me in the long term. But uh, doing the art stuff right now. That is very cool. And, man, the world is going towards computer, all things animation, man, I just think there's got to be a future in that for you. So good job. Hang in there. Keep going. Campbell, I'm curious, what kind of activities are you involved in at this point in your life? Um, I do competitive uh, horseback riding, so it's called Mm -hmm. Hunter Jumper. And then I also, I'm homeschooled and I cook as a job. Wow. That's cool. So not just cook for pleasure, (laughs) (laughs) for yourself or for your family, but 
for work. And uh, competitive writing, my goodness. I mean, I've seen it on TV, but I've never seen it up in real life. What got you into that? Um, I've always been really interested in horses, um, you know, as one does with the little figurines and such. But I really got interested in it in around 2020 when hmm. we were in COVID and the only thing cleared the only cleared activity in Georgia was agriculture. And mm. so I did horseback riding and I really enjoyed it. And I've been doing it ever since. That's really neat. That's really great. Well, I mentioned Christmas. Um, it's around the corner. Some kids and step families. Let me ask you guys that. Let's just jump in because I'm really curious what your experience has been like. Some kids that I've talked to in the past who live in a blended family situation say the holidays are sort of a mixed bag for them. There's, of course, there's a lot of happy in it, right? But there's also sometimes some sad, some sweet, some bitter. I'm wondering what the holidays are like for you guys now at this point in your family journey and what it was like in the beginning. Why don't, Davis, why don't you just start by reminding our listeners how long your mom and Rod have been married? I think their 10-year anniversary was just a little bit ago. It's 11 okay. in June. 11 in June. That's what it okay. is. Okay. All so, right. Yeah. Uh, 11 they years. Ma- married in 2013. And uh, we, my mom had raised us for five years, just her. And then uh, she met Rod. And then, you know. The rest is history. Yeah. And the rest is history. There you go. Right. Um, so Christmas. Uh, what's it like for you guys now going into Christmas? And I'm kind of wondering what it was like back if, you know, it's hard to think back 11 years, but do you, do you remember sort of what it was like then and how is it different now? Um, by like back then, you mean like, as in like before I had a stepfather in our, in our life? Uh, Sure. Feel free to back up to that season of your life, um, before they got married and then early on in the family. Okay. I mean, it's definitely really interesting now. A lot more people because we have uh, yeah. we have Rod's side. So um, I, I really love them. I think I was at a young enough age, and they're all just super nice people. So, like, they uh-huh. just made it super easy to, like, enjoy going to their house. And we didn't really, like, lose anything from it. It, like, it wasn't like when Christmas started. It was like, okay, we're only going to Rod's family now, or mm. we have to do every other. Like, they did a good job at, like compromising and I think making it super easy for us at that age. Yeah, okay. we our parents did a really good job of making us feel like nothing much had changed. Hmm. Uh, we met Rod in June, uh, not in June, but they got married in June and we moved to Atlanta. So we had pretty much all summer to kind of like assimilate. And mm-hmm. it was really nice because our family was so close. Rod's family lived really close. And nice. they've always been like so kind and if you know anything about my mom, you know, like, she's been married three times. So we still have other family from that as well. But Rod has just been just even more than I could have ever expected. He's, like, so kind and very accepting of, like, our hmm. complicated history. And he's just, he's amazing. Hmm. Hmm. That's really great. You know, I'll just tell our audience because they may have not heard that other podcast where I interviewed uh, Rachel and Rod. Um, She's been married three times. She was actually widowed twice before turning 30. Uh, Your dad, your father, he passed away. He was a pilot. And you guys were really young. And yet one of the things I know about grief is that it kind of grows up with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how that works for you guys. How do you carry your father with you? I think... Like tying into like how you mentioned grief, I, I think we've experienced it very differently and definitely at different times in our life, mm-hmm. I think would be the biggest difference between us. But um, I was I was two when it, when it happened. And um, so obviously I didn't really get what was going on. But um, I think around like five in that six, seven range, like I really realized what was happening and like the mm-hmm. magnitude of it, and like how it made me just a really different person when it comes to like my friends and stuff like that. And I think like Father's Days and stuff like that when all like kids bring their dads to school was like sort of when that started kind of having a kind of a deeper impact on me and um, but it definitely helped me get closer to like a lot of other you know male role models in my family like my grandparents and and stuff like that but um, Hmm. that's good I think it's lived with me and it's kind of a hard question because 
I think I've learned like learned so much more about him and like just like realized how I was similar to him and it's it's been a really interesting thing to just learn and like as I'm growing up and kind of develop more better relationships with my grandparents and they tell me more about him and you know my mom tells me more about him so yeah you know I don't think the grief has really lived with me in a like a super negative impact that maybe some people have but um it's it's definitely been interesting yeah, just one follow up on that. Um, the more your mom tells you about him, or family members, you know, grandparents, or you know, somebody else, pictures, maybe mm-hmm. you know, just different things that you see and come across. Uh, what does that feel like when you see it? When you learn something else about your dad? It it's really interesting because it's like I, I don't. I don't really know like a good like metaphor or like analogy to compare it to, but it's like the I like kind of remember his face from when I was a kid. So like mm-hmm. seeing videos and pictures of him is almost like seeing someone like out of a movie or like mm-hmm. out of a dream you've had or something like that. So it's it's a very interesting hmm. experience. But I think just like seeing the way he spoke is just so it's like so impactful. I something about that specifically, just seeing the way he spoke or the way he even interact with people, especially in like old videos that we've seen. It's just like, I think that's the most special, you know, cause it's, yeah. it's just like kind of seeing how I love seeing like the ways I'm kind of similar to him. Cause you know, I never really got, he didn't, obviously he didn't really raise me. So it's just so interesting to see that, right. you know, we have so many similar interests and, um, and stuff like that. And I, mm-hmm. I, I have so a bunch of his old stuff. Like I just bought a car a little bit ago and I've got his keychain on it. So just a bunch of stuff like that, just kind of. Of course, that small of things. course, that's one of the ways you carry him with you, right? And you know, and obviously he's, he's in you in some ways in terms of maybe interests and things that are coming out of you. That's yeah, that's good, Campbell. I'm wondering, what would you add to this? Davis is definitely a lot more similar to our dad than I am, but I went. I think from like a grief perspective, I went through. A really rough period when I was 11 Hmm. more so more of the abandonment and replacement perspective and less of the I miss him kind of situation Hmm. because I was five months old so I don't really have a lot to miss I never got I never got to know him enough to have something to miss I just felt the absence of not having a dad when other people did So when I was 11, I just kind of felt a lot of grief around the memories of him. Like I felt I was grieving the fact that I didn't have any memories and that all of my other friends didn't have stepdads. And I just felt like unique in a way that I didn't want to be. And I totally like rejected my stepdad at that point. And I was Mm. just like, I think it was a time where I turned more to anger instead of sadness to be able to cope. And that was a really rough period for me, but I think that was probably the worst bit of it for me. But throughout my entire life, I think it's very similar to you with the whole voice thing. I would say hearing videos, seeing pictures, like the wedding video is probably one of my favorites. And like my birth, like I've watched my birth. He Hmm. like, he made vlogs of my mom while she was in labor with me. And he's just so silly. And I, I really loved that. It was really, it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. When you get a glimpse like that, I'm, I just imagine that's something you go, man, I wish I knew more about that. I wish I had more of that. And that's that little side, sad part of your heart that never really gets over being sad. I told somebody once, uh, you know, tears are often an expression of love. It's, you know, I love you and I can't have you. So... (laughs) Uh, that's where my sadness, and that's how it shows up. So I'm curious, Campbell, if I could go back when Please. you said you, around 11, your sadness showed up as anger. Uh, I think that's really insightful, by the way, and I think a lot of people don't even realize that that's sort of what's going on with them, um, mm-hmm. especially at 11. Not many adults realize that <laughs> that their anger is really a sadness. And so how did that, sh- what did that look like? Like, if we were watching you be angry, what did it look like? Um, It was a sight. Um, It was... (laughs) So I... 
I hate to say this, but I definitely lived in a little bit of a world of delusion uh, when mm-hmm. it came to my stepdad. He was just absolutely flawless in every way. And I mean, not to toot his horn too much, but he literally did nothing wrong, like ever. He, I think he's just gone through such extensive counseling around becoming a blended family. So he was doing great. Mm-hmm. But I was scraping to find things wrong with him to pin him against my mom like I literally I was out for blood I wanted them to get a divorce like I Mm. was very against Rod in every way and I realized looking back on it now I just I think I was just angry that I didn't get to experience my dad and you know I think it's it's like a growing pain it's rebellious teenage year ish um and it was just, yeah, I was just a very angry person, and I kept trying to tell my mom that he's controlling you, he's controlling you, and he was doing no mm. such thing. And I went as far as to say, like, I'm not going to call you dad anymore. Mm. Mm. Like, you, I'm not your daughter. Like, just horrible things just because I was angry. Yeah, and if I could, how did he react? He cried a lot, um, but he took it well. I mean, from from like a communication perspective he took it really well but i think in his like personal life it like did more damage than he would care to let on yeah i imagine he felt felt the sting of it for sure um i know somebody's listening right now and or watching and they've got a kid who's currently angry and they're going all right campbell how did you come out of the anger what happened so my mom actually put us into counseling with a prayer therapist okay and we kind of just worked through that and it really helped me to kind of see that I wasn't angry at Rod and I was more angry with life for taking Mm. something away from me. But, um, from like a very practical perspective and less of a, from a therapeutic aspect of healing, I would say it was more just like me and my dad repairing our relationship. And he was definitely the pursuer in that, and he he just supported me a lot. We went out and we did things together, and he would just always try to pursue me. And honestly, I think no better. Like, that's such a good representation of God. Like, we want nothing to do with it, and he's just, like, endlessly chasing. Yes. So. Yeah, that's exactly. That's exactly right. So if there's a step parent who's listening right now and they're discouraged, I guess we would just say, yeah, pace well with this child. Don't overdo it. Don't. Don't don't chase them down and run them over, <laughs> but stay as close as they'll allow you to and don't stop. I guess that would be the nice wisdom that we could share. You already said something that I wanted to ask both of you about. I think I'll let Davis go first on this next one. Talk to me about terms that work for you guys. I mean, some people will say, oh, yeah, we say stepdad in our house or we say bonus dad or, you know, there's some step parents that they call them by their first name. I'm sure you guys have friends where, you know, you've heard it all. I'm just curious, how does that work for you, and has it changed over the years? Um, I think I think that was, like, honestly one of the biggest things that allowed me at, you know, the age of seven to, like, really kind of take him in is, like, I really believed that he was my dad, and, you know, he, he is and was, always will be, but um, I called him dad, like, while they were dating. Like, it okay. was just, I think, I grew up, playing baseball and this is like the cheesy thing but like just to have someone to throw with and like there's one thing where it's your mom cheering for you love my mom to death but like my mom would tell me I did good if I struck out three times you know it's just like there's something about a dad <laughs> that's what telling moms you, do <laughs> yeah for sure but uh there's something about a dad telling you had a good game or you know like just being mm-hmm. able to practice with them and you know they know that uh yeah. you're doing good or you know you need some work so I think just being able to hang out with him and I, you know, called him dad. I think I just wanted that so bad and that Mm -hmm. he was just, um, he definitely, just like you said, like he was pursuing me and I think, you know, kind of unlike her, I just, I, it was like the traction I needed. Like, I think Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was spinning wheels and I just, that was what I needed and immediately caught on. And I think if he went, you know, slow into it and was a little more timid with me, you tried to go by, you know, maybe how I was feeling on the shire side of we probably wouldn't have the same relationship we do now, but mm-hmm. I just think I felt really loved like immediately. And um, yeah, I call him dad all the time. I, I've never referred to him as stepdad. I'm typically caught off guard by it. Like when I'm at 
government stuff or getting a who knows mm-hmm. what and they're like your oh your stepfather I like almost I forget but yeah. um huh. I think definitely an interesting place about it is just like referring to with other family and stuff like that I think it's like you know me calling him Rod when I'm just like referring to the difference because like we call um Daddy Blair, Blair we call him Daddy Blair just because that's what we called him is like our whole life but yeah you know yeah. it's okay. it's interesting trying to gauge that with you know his parents or I, I was just going to ask yeah. you about that. Right. If Blair's parents, your biological father's parents are in the room, mm-hmm. what do you call Rod? You call him Rod dad. at that point? We call, call him, him dad. We, we call him both dad unless we're differentiating, I think, for uh-huh. sure. But okay. I I actually say Rod around them, um, but not in a way where I'm trying to like be you know a two-face, where I'm trying to please the one or the mm-hmm. other. I think it's just a clarification thing. Like mm-hmm. They call him Rod. So, you know, or, and a lot of times, you know, we just talk, end up talking about Blair a lot. So when they say, you know, oh, your dad, blah, 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 it's pretty obvious that they're referring around him unless it's, you know, contextual, mm-hmm. we'll make it different. But, you know, I, the good thing is we've never really had any like issues about it or it doesn't seem to be like there's a, don't call him your father or something like that. You know, it's a fr- yeah, yeah, fairly yeah. healthy scenario. Cool. I want to hear how this works for Campbell, but first... She already told us that there was a season of her life, Davis, where she stopped calling him dad. Mm. What was that like for you as her brother when she was angry at him? Um, I honestly just felt really bad for Rod. Um, I felt, um, I think it was a tough scenario because it was like I didn't see anything of why she would be doing this. Mm. And I think her being in that scenario made her, you know, definitely more mad at kind of everybody. Uh, not just him, but um, I just remember having some moments with him where I really felt bad. And I was at the age where it probably would have been inappropriate for him to be like, let's gossip about your sister and let my feelings out, you know. <laughs> so it was like, I don't think I was, um, I think it was, it wasn't a super big place in my mind where I was super concerned or super not concerned. I think I was just happy to have a dad at the moment and um yeah. Yeah. Honestly, cool. I, I think it wasn't. I didn't realize it as much until like after it happened. Okay. All right. Cool. Campbell. So, what terms do you use? Dad, father, papa. You know. Um, <laughs> I'm. My dad and I are like super close now. But yeah. I'd say the first six years were pretty smooth sailing. The second date, um, I called him dad. So mm. the second mm. time we met. And the first time we met, I led him around the woods and I wanted to impress him so bad. So I told him that I dug up trees and that is a long standing joke in our family. Cause I dug said, up trees. Yeah, I would just point, <laughs> this was not true, but I literally just was like pointing to trees. I was like, I dug that one up. I was like four. I was like four. That's but cute. She used I, to hate that story. Oh, we I used to, <laughs> yeah. She used to be like, she said, she said to him, like, you know, Dad, I'm a digger. I'm a digger. I'm a digger. <laughs> I dig things. And, um, I dig <laughs> And yeah. for years, she hated that story. If we brought it up at dinner or something, like... And now you're just ferocious. owning it, girl. Yeah. Way to go. You Way know, to go. No more running from my identity, you know. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, as far as, like, our relationship through the teenage years and all that kind of thing, he's gone with me to daddy-daughter dances. Like, mm. he's been endlessly supportive, and we're very much very similar people I played sports all throughout middle school and high school and he and I played the exact same sports and I think we're just really close and he's I think we got super lucky as well um Hmm. just to be in the situation that we were put in where we didn't have a firm standing relationship with our biological father before he came into our lives so I think we got pretty lucky from that point but um also, Rod is just, like, amazing, and we're so blessed to be mm. able to have such, like, faith-driven parents and just to have God invited into the home consistently and just, like, always having that to turn to has been really nice. Yeah. Oh, that's such a blessing. Absolutely. One of the things we say around here is uh, blended families done well are redemptive. They bring blessing to people's lives who have been through something hard already. And even as you guys are talking, I'm hearing that over and over as you talk about Rod. Uh, So, Campbell, I asked Davis a minute ago when you were not so accepting or receiving of uh, of your dad, 
what he felt about that. I'm curious, how did you feel towards him, towards Davis, during that season when you were angry and it was coming out against Rod? Did um, it annoy you that Davis was still, you know, calling him dad and all that? I think I was in a very deep pit of anger at the time and so I was really mad at everyone I thought it was just like a man thing I was very mad at my dad and Davis it was like a combo Hmm. and I was like let's run away together mom like Hmm. I genuinely (laughs) said that and it was great timing because I ended up going to film a TV show that I was doing at the time um, for about like a like a week, week and a half, two weeks, and in Los Angeles, and it was a time that me and my mom got to just spend together and kind of reflect, and once, after we came back from that, I think things really started to smooth out, because I realized, you know, if dad goes away, the problems don't go away, like, the Mm -hmm. problems are still here, he is not the cause of that, and Mm. it, it didn't just go away immediately, but we did work through it, and, but I would say that was a pretty big catalyst in my relationship with Rod. Wow. Okay, cool. I'm curious, was there ever a a time in your life as a family where you just sort of felt, I don't know, sort of disconnected or confused about your family? Uh, You know, Davis, you were talking, yeah, Davis, you were saying earlier how other people didn't have stepdads or they didn't call or they do call their stepdad stepdad, but you called yours dad. Sort of like you're looking around, you're listening to your friends, you're seeing what other people are experiencing, and you just sort of felt kind of weird about your family? Hmm. Um, to be honest, I think I had so much, um, uh, like, not necessarily ignorance, but just, like, I just didn't know. Uh, I wasn't really thinking that much about other families. I think I was more self-conscious and just trying to be, like, a guy and be cool in middle school and stuff like that. And I think yeah. I, I think one thing that was I had a lot of friends growing up whose parents were divorced so if anything, they were just like a variation of me. And I almost, I think a lot of times, like I had a friend who grew up and, you know, he never called his dad dad and his biological dad like um, went to jail and had a bunch of other stuff. So there were other people to relate to me to the point where I never felt, I never, I definitely never felt weird. And I think I, I was also like very proud to have Rod. Like he's just mm-hmm. such a cool guy. Like my friends liked him, like everybody, you know, he was just a you know, a great guy to be proud of and great guy to have. So I think, I think I, that filled that gap to the point where there was really never an insecurity there. Hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. How'd that work for you, Campbell? Um, I would say I've never really struggled with that except for like one time when the dances were a big deal for me, uh, the father daughter dances, because it was like, everybody had their dads out on display and like my dad's cooler than yours and like my dad it's not that he couldn't he was he was just gone he was on a trip or something and couldn't go and I remember that being a really big deal because I was like I just I'd never like felt the weight of that before and I was like well I guess this is kind of you know this is the way it is because like my real dad is dead and Mm -hmm. that was that was the one time I've I think I've I didn't really cry about it a lot, but I did cry about that because it was just really tough for me to be like, it was just a reminder that he's not my, you know, biological father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And does that come with sort of a a conflict within you? Like, how do I love both of these guys? How, How do I love the man who's my biological father that I don't know very well and I wish were here and I wish I knew more of and at the same time love Rod, who's great and he's here and... I mean, do you ever sort of just feel conflicted between those two places? I I think I think for sure, yeah. I mean, um, it's definitely been. I think I haven't really expressed it much, like speaking about. It. I think that's been kind of one of the more topics that I've just kind of let marinate in my head and just mm. kind of battling with myself because I think it's hard to be like ask someone. It's I feel like it's also hard for me to put that into words um, and really talk to someone about that. But um, I think just the more I learn about like who he was and like how good he was to my mom, it was just like, it was easy for me to, to realize that Rod is just loving our family and he's not a replacement, you know, like that word doesn't even have to come into the picture. And like, Mm -hmm. 
he's just loving our family and, you know, being good to us. And, but, you know, I think we're definitely a unique family to the sense where we know who he was and know what kind of impact he had on our life and obviously really saw it. And, but we don't really know him that well, nor did we like have the attachment that some kids who, you know, lose their dad at seven or eight or, you know, even our age, it's like, I think that definitely has a lot more challenges and, you know, realistically bigger challenges because they're just way more a part of your life. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it definitely creates an interesting, more interesting scenario. It's like, I love, you know, I just really love what he did for us. And um, sorry, I'm talking too much, but I, when I was like a kid, I, um, like I would always say, you know, like I really miss him. Like I, and I think I was just missing like you, yeah, what you, I didn't have. You struggled with it a lot more than I did. Yeah, sure. definitely younger, but um, I just miss the idea of him. the idea. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead, Campbell. I'd love to hear what you're thinking. Oh, um, I was just gonna say like, if you come at it, I just like usually like to come at it from a point of like gratitude, and if I'm ever feeling the the lack of my dad I'm always kind of like well my life is really different now it would have been really different if he was here again and Mm -hmm. I but I'm like endlessly grateful for the life that I have now and I'm grateful for the memories that he's left us with because for me that's just the way that I am being a very like imaginative person um thinking can get me into a lot of trouble so it's, it's just kind of like, don't think about what ifs, you know? Don't think about what could have been or, like, where your life might be. Just be grateful for what you have and the memories that you have. And, like, I have two parents who love me to death. And I have a dad in heaven who also loves me. And, like, it's just, like, focusing on, like, the gratitude aspect of it kind of outweighs the grief for me. Mm. Yeah, it definitely speaks to the grief. Um, and you know, one of the things you, you guys don't know this about me, but I lost a child and I know deeply what it means to walk through life every day thinking, boy, he would be <laughs> almost 29. What, what, what would life be like, um, if he were still here and to miss him and to enjoy what we have and the memories I have and the videos I have and the audio clips I have of his of him singing and all that kind of stuff and at the same time to go but that's not real that doesn't happen now I don't have that I have some other different reality and so I grieve the past I grieve what could have been and and be find gratitude I really like the way you said that for what the Lord is doing in my life even now to sustain and uphold and pull me forward. And I kind of think that's at the end of the day, that's what we come back to. Sometimes we can get mad at God for all the stuff that's happened in our lives that we didn't ask for and we didn't want. And if we were writing the script, it would have been a whole lot different. But for some reason, it didn't go that way and God allowed it. And that's another thing. Do you guys ever wrestle with where's God fit in all of this? Mm-hmm. Um, I think definitely as a when I was really younger, that was a big question because it was just like a constantly, I feel like it's super easy to just really blame it on that, especially when, you know, my mom was doing a good job at being, you know, God's got us and stuff like that, you know, saying that to us a lot. That It's like, you know, how does God have us if it feels like he put us in this situation? And it's just mm-hmm. like, I think that was definitely, definitely a battle that took a lot of like time to s- kind of slowly... Um, kind of sift out of my mind, I would say. Like, it definitely wasn't a one and done kind of, oh, you know, mm-hmm. I just trust God and stuff like this happens. It was definitely like a lot of seeing other people, seeing that, you know, trusting God and, you know, seeing that he has a plan. It's just like, it's something that really took time for me. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. I had a ton of anxiety around, um, I think that was like one of the biggest like negative emotions that I took away was not necessarily like the grief, but like the anxiety and like the fear that I got from when he passed away and just having constant like, you know, when my mom was gone, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, not home when she said she would, I would 
always assumed like she was in a terrible car accident or something like that or Damn. and I just had a lot of like really really serious anxiety about it and um and I think it was just interesting to be like you know go, like how you know the lightning never strikes twice thing that kind of and then but you know my mom lost two husbands so it's like I just never thought like you know we're that could be us again and I, I don't know if it's gonna happen I don't know how it's gonna happen and and the scary part is is I know how horrible it would be for our family if we mm-hmm. lost another person after you know basically spending mm-hmm. all this time getting over the f- yeah. first so you know that was tough but I, I, I'm, I'm like you once once we've been educated is the way I say it that bad things happen mm-hmm. you can't go back to being ignorant about that sort of thing anymore you just know it could happen right so how do I live in, you know, in the meantime? It's not easy. Mm-hmm. Campbell? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I never, I don't, I don't think I ever really struggled with that. Um, I remember when Davis and I were really young, the one time that I think I really saw that anxiety in you was when our mom was like, she wasn't responding to the phone. I think she was in the shower or something. And, like, mm-hmm. Davis and I left. He, like, grabbed my hand, and, like, we were gone. And we went asking people on the street to let us borrow their phones and call our mom. And I just mm-hmm. remember that being, like, a really big thing. Yeah. But, yeah. I just yeah. remember that. And that kind of, like, scared me. And I was like, why are we worried about mom? Like, why are we worried about mom? And, yeah, I mean, I think it's just... It's also just really hard having to, like, I think it might have been really hard on our mom to raise us without somebody else. So we kind of felt that off of her, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think probably so. Okay, open-ended question, either one of you or both. What's the best thing about your blended family? What's been the hardest thing about your family? And what's been, or what's been the most surprising thing? You can do one or all three. Um, best, um, I'd say it's just as like a son growing up with a dad. I think it's just so important. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's just so many things about me that I just know that I would not be who I am now. And, you know, I'm really happy with who I am right now. I obviously I've got insecurities and you know, what's not good about me, but, um, there's just definitely so many social things and life things that I've gotten from him that I, you know, cannot thank him enough for. I think that's mm-hmm. definitely the biggest thing. I mean, we've just had so many great conversations. We trust each other so much to where I, I've i come to so many things about him that I know many of my friends are things they'd never talk to their dads about, and that's just mm-hmm. been really, really impactful on, like, who I am. Um, worst? You want us to go back and forth or just, like, run them I, all? Okay. Doesn't matter. Feel okay. free. Um, <laughs> I think worst is, mm. I don't even know. Um, I think within the specific topic, like of having a stepdad and stuff like that, and not necessarily just like our life after a stepdad would just be, um, I just feel bad. Like when we're talking about Blair a lot, like I, I think that's mm. one big thing for me. And that's probably something that, I shouldn't worry about as much, but I just think, like, I think I put myself in his shoes a lot and be like, I think it'd be tough um, to see us. Like, he's a really big part of our life, obviously, and I think a lot more than other people just because we do a lot of military stuff and we speak about him and how he's been impactful in our lives, and I think I just feel bad for for Rod sometimes just having to be like, I that that's probably a tough mental battle that at least I would have. And, um, but, um, I don't know. You don't want, you don't want him to feel what? That, um, jealous that we would rather have him, that we would rather have Blair or something like that. Obviously that's like Mm. a worst case scenario and a, it would be like just out of a place of, you know, just, um, I guess insecurity, but in a natural way, you know, who wouldn't feel like that when, um, you know we post about him for Memorial Day and things like that. And, you know, when yeah. we have grandparents over and tell us about, you know, who he was as a person, I think it'd be tough. I think that's just something I think about a lot is I just feel mm-hmm. like, um, I think it'd be tough to really feel like fully loved and wanted sometimes. Mm-hmm. 
I, I appreciate that empathy in you. That's really strong. Mm-hmm. And that's that back to that conflict that we were talking about earlier where you see them both, you love them both, and you don't want one to feel something as it relates to your relationship right. with the other. I, I'm curious, have you ever articulated what you just said to me to Rod? Like, hey, dude, when I'm posting about Blair, just know this, this doesn't mean anything about you and me. Um, for sure. I think we've more talked about it. I think it's really not me, the one doing those things that I feel bad about. I think it's more just like mom and, and Campbell mainly. Cause uh, yeah. I don't really yeah. talk. I think I talk about him in more, a lot less emotional ways and well, I guess emotional, but I just, um, I talk about cool things he did and stuff like that. But I, I mm-hmm. think I'm, I really try to be sensitive with it mm-hmm. and, uh, not in a way that like, you know, I, I not in a way that like I'm gonna not talk about my dad because I don't want to hurt Rod's feelings. Like I know mm-hmm. that he's not like that, and he's really happy for us to, you know, have a cool dad like that and be able to value him for the things he does. But I've definitely spoken to him about it and um, mm, just let him know that, you know, um, I don't even know. Just kind of like what I just told yeah. you, basically. Yeah, that's great. No, that's good. I think that's really important. Campbell, your turn. Um, the best thing about having a blended family is literally just rod he's amazing Mm. he's Mm. like one of my Mm. best friends Mm. i just think we've kind of gotten to that point in our parent child relationship where he's definitely more of like a friend and less of a parent but um or maybe equally maybe one more or the other some days he's just he's everything i need him to be and i love that very much Mm. but um the hardest thing definitely what davis said a hundred percent um i feel kind of guilty for talking about Blair sometimes and I've definitely talked to Rod about this like a lot I'm like you know I never want like to replace you I love you guys like you're just different people I love you in different ways like you know that and I think we've gotten to like a really stable point in our relationship where it's not really so much of an issue anymore but it definitely used to be Hmm. good and I'm glad you've had the courage to both of you the, the courage to express some of that because that's one of the ways you help to dispel w- w- them misunderstanding your heart. Mm-hmm. What are you going to say? Um, I think just two things. Uh, one thing I was just going to say is, like, we call him Rod a lot on this call, and I think it's, like, someone might be listening and be like, well, I thought they called him Dad, you know what yeah. I mean? But I think it's uh-huh. just easy for us to be, like, almost like we're talking to our, our grandparents or clarifying yeah, yeah. to someone, especially when, you know, differentiating. But, um mm-hmm. And I also think, like, taken away from what I was saying before is that it's really not something I've, I wouldn't say it's a worse part isn't something I constantly struggle with or something that really hurts our family. I just think it's something, it's just a little, like, tough to see sometimes. I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to even think of, like, what maybe the worst part of, of like, like the, blending would be. Um, we, I think we, ha- the struggles that we struggle with the most, I think, are very normal family things. But probably. I'm trying to think of, like. I'm trying to think of a an example that may be more common in a home that is blending for the first time or something. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And then what was the other question? You said best, worst, and um, uh, surprising. most surprising. Most surprising. Mm. Well, wor- I'll think about worst. You think about surprising. Okay. <laughs> um, I think most surprising. Um, I don't think I ever would have expected to trust him and him trust me as much as he does um I think I definitely saw a lot of dads like as a kid like putting a lot of pressure on a lot of my friends and I think that's kind of totally what I expected and uh that's really not how it is I mean um he wants me to do what I'm I, I want to work hard at and want to get good at and he's always been there I mean I'm like the craziest hobby freak I have like a hundred hobbies and he's always been there for me hmm. to you know get good at them and develop them and you know, I'm an, I'm pretty much an art student, so a lot of dads are like, you know, you should do finance or business yeah, or something, yeah. and he's been super supportive in that, and I don't think I would have expected that coming into it, especially if I, I don't, I definitely don't think I would expect that if I blended at my age now after yeah. seeing what my friends are like. Hmm. Let me talk about what's like the most surprising part would be probably when Rod came into the family, I I would have expected him to be a lot more uptight about everything, such as, like, oh, wow, she's been married twice before me and has two children. Like, I would have been a lot more uptight, and he's just been really relaxed about the whole thing and very understanding. 
Mm. And I think that's contributed to the smooth transition. But That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Last question. Say a kid was listening. I don't know. Somebody 10, 15, who knows? Maybe 25. And they're listening to this conversation. And they're still in the trying to figure it out stage. Kind of wrestling with some things. Not feeling very confident about how things are going in their family. What's your 10 second advice for them? 10 second advice. Mm. You wanna go first? Yeah, I think it's hard because I think it's super dependent on really the personalities of who you're trying to connect with. You know, you may have a, I just know some dads who are honestly just shy people and have mm-hmm. like harder trouble connecting with their kids that are not in blended families and, mm-hmm. you know, really, you know, haven't even, I don't even know if they have had the opportunities to really reach out and communicate a lot of things just because that's how it is. And that's in a non-blended family, so that's difficult enough. But um, I think just like on like our end, it's like you may expect like, you know, it's really their job to reach out to you. But uh, especially you're saying like, you know, even 25 years old, it's like, I feel like at some level you got to know is like, we're all being blended. Obviously that's kind of a generic statement Mm -hmm. but um Mm -hmm. it's like you have that certain priority to each other it's like you if you want to it's everybody's job to make a difference you know it's like it's not like you need to if your dad's new to the family you don't need to wait for him to reach out to you it's like he's going through just as much as you are likely more and um you know and knowing that if he loves you and wants to connect with you so you're saying from like a like a distance, like maybe there's yeah. the, too much distance in the family. Yeah, and, feeling that and I hear and I hear you saying, g- give them a chance. You know, mm-hmm. try to do your part and try to figure out uh, how you guys can can get along. Mm-hmm. Nice. For Campbell? me, I would say my best ten second advice would be don't rush it. Hmm. Don't rush the immersion. Like it takes time to feel comfortable with someone. Um, regardless like a friend um it would take a while to become best friends with someone so like give it the amount of time you would give someone if you wanted to be best friends you know Mm -hmm. and treat it like a friendship go on play dates like figure each other out a little bit try to navigate that from a very like playful perspective also like invite humor into it it's not gonna be clean it's like a very messy process and just let it be that way you know Mm -hmm. i know it can be really hard for my type a's out there but like just gotta go with it go with the flow kind of see how things go and embrace embrace the rough stuff as much as the smooth like because it's all gonna help you know if something really sucks i would always say just be like this will be funny in five years 10 Mm. years 20 years Mm. like it'll all be okay it's always gonna end out good i think she's really right about the humor thing too is like now i think about it it's like especially if like i think whoever the kid is is at the age to where it's not gonna hurt them to be honest or at least realistic like I think I remember like my dad talks about things you know like when I was first your dad or he says things like that where he's just able to be transparent and Mm. about what he was thinking with me or you know what he didn't know about or what expectations or you know absence of expectations I I think that can be really helpful is just like being transparent because especially if they're if you feel like you know they're old enough to wear they can be like, you know, I'm your stepdad. Like, I just want to get to know you. It's like there doesn't need to be that disconnect of trying to be something you're not. Mm. Yeah. Guys, man, I got to tell you, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate you. And let me just, on behalf of all of our listeners and viewers, let me just say thank you to you for your courage and your willingness to just come on and be real and tell it like it is. I know it's given a lot of good perspective to a lot of people. So thank you for that. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Mm, God bless you guys. If you, the listener or viewer, have enjoyed this conversation, hey, we got more coming with more kids. So stay tuned. A quick reminder that we are a donor-supported ministry. And yes, it's December. This is the best time of year to give to Family Life because every dollar gets doubled by generous donors. So please consider making a year-end tax-deductible gift. If you haven't subscribed to us yet on 
your podcast app or on YouTube, please do that. We don't want you to miss any of our future conversations. And please remember to go back, uh, what, 130, 140 uh, previous podcasts that you can listen to. There's a lot of good stuff. It's all free. We would love for you to take advantage of that. Knowing that the holidays are kind of stressful, let me just remind you that we have a growing list of counselors and coaches that have gone through my advanced training in step family therapy. They are listed on the website, smartstepfamilies.com. They are listed as recognized providers of smart step family therapy. We've got a list there. You can look them up by states, and we have a number of international providers around the world as well. So take a look. Some of them even work with people virtually. So if you don't have somebody in your backyard, well, maybe there's somebody you can tap into in a virtual way. That'd be great. Again, check the show notes for a link to that page. I'm Ron Deal. Thanks for listening or watching. And thank you to our production team and donors who make this podcast possible. Family Life Blended is part of the Family Life Podcast Network, helping you pursue the relationships that matter most.